Happy New Year, let's get crafty friends. The Christmas season has ended and 2021 is here and we are going to make some Morse code art. I think Morse code is really cool because it is one of the most versatile forms of communication. It can be done in text or in sound or through light waves. Um, it uses these two different signal durations called dots and dashes, or when people vocalize it, sometimes they use them as dits and das. It was uh, named after Samuel Morse, who's the inventor of the telegraph. And it's just a really spiffy form of communication. So we're going to use it to remind us of what we need to hear this year. And I'm gonna let the Morse code Tell us what we know it's time to do. For the Morse code art project, of course, I needed access to the international Morse code, as well as something to write on and something to write with, and I chose a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker. I used three different types of beads, which I'll tell you about in a minute as well as a seven strand bead wire, which is about just under half a millimeter. I also used a pair of scissors and a scalloped edge blank greeting card and some clear tape. To tell you a little bit more about the beads, I chose to use clear glass seed beads, three millimeter by eight millimeter tube beads, and some small rondelle beads that were one third the size of the tube beads. So let's clear everything out of the way and then I will show you my process for making this art. My first step for this project was to decide what I wanted the art to say and not in a metaphorical dig deep into the text, what does this piece of art say, but literally when translated from Morse code, what would this art say? For years now, my various youth groups have had a response call of Focus Jesus. And so I decided that would be a great piece of art to have on my desk, especially during this pandemic. The word focus, I made that piece of art during Let's Get Crafty as my demonstration. So here's what that looked like. I decided for this demonstration that I would make the word Jesus. My next step was to translate Jesus into Morse code so I would know what beads I would need. So I started with J, which was dit, da, da, da. The dits are dots and the das are dashes. I also used a black marker just so I would know where to put my seed beads in between my letters. I followed the same process for the rest of the letters. I also chose to put five seed beads before and after the word. If I was being technical to Morse code, I would have put seven. However, I just wanted something to fill the space. Next, I counted out each of my beads so that I would know exactly how many I needed to prepare before doing this project. I would suggest figuring out what you might want to say before heading to the bead store so that you can ensure that you have exactly the right number of beads or maybe a couple extra in case you lose some along the way. That especially happens with the seed beads because they're so tiny. So here are my beads all prepared and ready to go. And so the next thing I did was to lay them out in order. The two beads for my and the rondelle beads for my dits. 
This project does not specifically need to be done with this size bead. However, for where I wanted to display it, this seemed like the right choice. I did not choose at this time to put my seed beads in at the black dots simply because they were so tiny and I was afraid I would lose them. It's hard to see, but my seed beads are in that lid. They're very tiny. My next part of the process was to take my bead wire and determine the length that I would need. Since I knew I would be putting it around the scalloped greeting card, I just measured twice the length because I knew that would be more than enough. The bead wire is thin enough that I was able to use a pair of scissors. However, if I was going to do this on a regular basis, I would probably get wire cutters so that I didn't damage my scissors with the bead wire. Some people at this point choose to put a knot or attach a ring or if they plan to turn this into a piece of jewelry, put the clasp on the end to ensure that the beads don't fall off. However, I knew that my wire was long enough that it would not be a problem. I decided to start at the end of my word and work backwards. I used the end of my wire to pick up my beads, which again, they're just so tiny that they're very difficult to see and focus on. If this was a project that I planned on doing more often, again, there are other tools that would make this process easier, but since I only needed to put a few beads on the wire. I decided that it wasn't worth getting the tools. Once I laid out the beads, it was really easy because all I needed to do was to follow along and put the beads directly on the wire, how I laid them out. This is a project that requires fine motor skills. If I was using a string, I might choose to put knots in between my letters instead of the seed beads, but using the wire, I didn't think that would look as good. I might also choose to use knots at the end of the words to keep the beads in place especially if this was going to be a necklace or a bracelet. And that's all it took to get the beads in order on the wire. Something that I really like about this project is that it can be made as a necklace or bracelet and then kept on the stand in between uses as a piece of art on top of a dresser or on a desktop. I used a scalloped edge blank greeting card to make a stand. To make the stand, I counted up two scallops on each side and then folded over the edge. I also used the center line of the greeting card to fold on so that I knew that the entire stand would be balanced. Many adhesives would work. However, in this case, I chose tape to hold the two pieces of the stand space together. The most basic way to put the art on the stand is simply to wrap it around the scallops. If it is a necklace or a bracelet, I could have clipped the edges to themselves in the back. In this case, I was able to tape the ends inside the stand.
If I wanted to display them on two separate cards, there I have Focus and Jesus as two separate pieces of art. Because I'm not interested in using these beads as jewelry and instead want to use them as a piece of art for my desk, I wanted them on one stand. And so I grabbed a push pin and figured out based on the scalloped edges where I wanted the art to be relative to the height of the card. I knew I still wanted to fold over the bottom too. So I kept that in mind when I chose how many scallops to count down. I simply poked holes in the places where I wanted the wire to be able to go through. I found that it was a whole lot easier to do this process because I had access to the back of the card the whole time and did not have to try to reach inside the stand to make it work. I still folded down the base of the stand ahead of time so that I was not trying to fold down the base while the beads were on the other side. However, I did not tape it together until after the beads were on. Next, I took the word focus. And because I had two beads, I did check to make sure that the F in focus aligned with the Morse code letter F so that I did not accidentally have my art say Jesus focus. I prepared two pieces of scotch tape along with the beads before I started attaching the beads to the greeting card stand to make it easier once I got going. I just took the wire and poked it through the holes. And then holding the wire steady, I flipped the card to the other side. I made small knots in the wire to ensure that the wire would not pull through to the other side easily. Since I knew that I was also going to tape this down, I knew I did not need to be extremely precise, but I also have artisan friends who would have preferred the knots be closer to the holes. I tried to ensure that the end of my wire was underneath the tape so that there were no sharp pointy bits. Next, I did the exact same process with the beads that said Jesus. In this case, my primary concern was ensuring that the beads could be centered on the wire that was showing while still maintaining a balance of the wire in the back. Most people will not look at the back of this piece of art, so I know that it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. I know most of our Let's Get Crafty participants chose to make jewelry as a way that they could remind themselves of their word or words that they wanted to focus on. However, I tend to break jewelry, so I thought it would be more meaningful to have it on my desk where I could see it when I was working. So I just folded over those bottom flaps and used a couple pieces of scotch tape, one on each end, to tape inside and wrap around to the bottom. Depending on what color beads someone chose, they might choose to color in or decorate their stand in other ways. I am perfectly fine with this simplistic look. I'm also okay with the fact that my beads don't go all the way to the holes. However, if someone wanted to fill in all that extra space where those beads are, using extra seed beads would be perfect in those areas. 
And that's all there is to it. Hey, let's get crafty friends. Thank you so much for joining us to make some Morse code art. I hope that whatever word or phrase you chose, uh, that the Morse code will help remind you when you need to hear it. I'm missing you guys all tremendously. So my little focus Jesus art uh, really reminds me of you all and how much I miss seeing your faces and being with you uh, and hearing your response when I shout focus. So have a wonderful January. I hope to see you at our next Let's Get Crafty. Bye, friends. Stay safe.